one of the most sinister of the Preventative has been found for our age disease. You know, 10,000 babies a year in this country alone. And these permanent scars are in the millions of thousands more. The American Association of Blood Banks holds its 20th anniversary meeting in New York today. And this new breakthrough in medical science will be the subject of many discussions. The product is called Rogan. RH uh, immunoglobulin program, Rogam for short. It's not yet licensed for general distribution, but it has uh, proved almost completely effective after several years of clinical trials. Rogam was perfected by Dr. William Pollock of the Ortho Research Foundation and Dr. Vincent Frieda and John Gorman of the Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center in New York. Drs. Pollock and Gorman are visiting with us before going on to their medical meetings. Uh, congratulations to you, gentlemen, and to all the medical men and researchers who made the breakthrough. Barbara and I want to ask you some questions after starting them right during that uh, commercial message. Uh, would you tell us just first of all what causes RH disease? And then we'll get to the break. RH uh, hemolytic disease uh, occurs uh, in uh, certain families uh, that have, have RH negative mother and RH positive father. And uh, there's a danger in such families that the mother will become immunized to the RH factor, which is on the, the blood of the father and it's on the blood of the baby. Now, when uh, a mother and if a mother becomes immunized like this, her antibodies she may uh, damage the baby's blood so that the baby can be stillborn or can be born uh, and die soon after birth or suffer from anemia. I didn't realize this could affect the fetus. I thought it never showed up until after the baby was born. Or was most, of the, most of the mortality is from stillbirth uh, because the methods now of treatment of birth are very good. The baby is born in reasonable shape. They can save it. Yes. Right. Does this happen with the firstborn child or is it always after the firstborn? It almost never occurs. It almost never does occur with the firstborn. It's born. much less than 1% of all these babies. Uh, Why is that? that? Well, we don't believe today that the immunization process occurs during pregnancy. Actually, we believe that the uh, red cells which are left behind after they is the um, stimulus yeah. that makes the mother make antibodies. In other words, the nature of the mother's blood under these conditions is that the antibodies consider the red cells that come from the father as, as hostile microbes. And the foreign substance. Yes. I see. Yes. That's, that's the nature of the, of the disease. What is, up until now, what treatment methods have been available outside of transfusion? What, what did it do? The methods are based on uh, uh, getting having the baby, getting the baby out of its dangerous environment, which is uh, in utero, uh, and then uh, treating it with, with exchange transfusions. Uh, that's the main method of uh, management. Uh, the aim really is to uh, detect when the fetus is getting too sick and deliver it early and have to balance the risks of premature prematurity against uh, uh, the risk of the danger in utero. Now these are the so-called blue babies. Afraid that we use blue babies, which is the first encouraged factor. No, no, that's, that's different. That's that is? Yes, these should really be called RH babies. And in fact, they're yellow because they're uh, joined. Well, how are they joined? Is there a reversal to a viral form? No, the joined occurs because of the rapid destruction of blood. Yeah, and uh, one like of the uh, end products of so uh, blood metabolism, like hemoglobin metabolism, is uh, mm -hmm. bile. You don't take it from jaundice. The you baby know, just can't handle it. Uh, so bile. Well, now you do an immediate trans transfusion when the child is born. Yes. So how soon after you know, the birth does this have to be done? Well, it's sooner the better. As soon as you know that the baby is going to be sick, you do the exchange transfusion. The results seem to be better if it's done the to, who was the first mother if you let the going to build up yeah. brain damage. But, um, this shouldn't happen. Did you want to say picture too? Oh, oh, you did? Okay, good. Good. All right. How widespread is this RH factor? Mm -hmm. RH well, we estimate that um, around the world altogether there, there's an incidence, a total risk incidence of about 2 million people. About 10% of these um, on an annual basis would be getting RH disease. 
It's quite a significant number of cases. Do you year. always know? Is there always a test taken? If it does not show up in the first baby, does the mother always know that there are these RH factors possible? It's very easy, as a matter of fact, to determine whether or not the mother has made these antibodies so that before she goes into a pregnancy, she would be aware. Or at least sometime during the pregnancy, these antibodies when they first appear and be readily detected. Do, do couples uh, anticipating marriage, are, there's no mandatory test like there is for, uh, for venereal disease. Well, I don't think this is a desirable thing, really. You don't to think it would be necessary to have a test. But do many married couple, or couples anticipating marriage try to find out what the blood factors are? Just to I used to have a professor that when medical students used to ask whether or not they should, uh, in fact, have blood tests and have their fiancés blood tested, the RH factor would say, no, this is the most minor of incompatibilities in marriage. Mm -hmm. so, uh, <laughs> well, now, with, uh, particularly with this, with uh, this new breakthrough, I think it should not be, mm -hmm. nobody should not get married just for that reason alone. Well, now, uh, now that we've kind of explored what the disease is, we want to find out exactly what this uh, rogue is, and we'll do that after we duck out for one minute and come back. It's 15 minutes now after the hour. We're back now with Drs. Pollock uh, and Gorman. And the subject is the RH disease and a new breakthrough that's come through called Rogam, a substance that, uh, well, a substance that we're going to ask them to explain now, which, uh, which is corrective and a, a sort of a vaccine. Uh, what exactly is Rogam? Well, could I uh, set this up by saying that the disease does not occur uh, until the RH negative mother becomes immunized to the RH factor. And the only time that this can happen, it can happen with a blood transfusion, but the usual time is an RH positive pregnancy. Now, each time the mother has an RH positive pregnancy, there is a risk that that mother will become immunized. And yeah. then the second pregnancy would suffer. That's correct. All future pregnancies will suffer once the mother becomes immunized. And this uh, was pointed out or was discovered by Dr. Philip Levine about I think, 25 years ago that this was the cause of the disease. And that as soon as his work was done, it became apparent to everybody that if you could prevent the mother's being immunized, you would eliminate the disease. Of course, preventing uh, immunity is difficult because it's one of the most basic functions to defend against uh, hostile germs. Would there be any parallel between what this does and what, uh, say, a hand of doing in You know what? Actually, people have asked me for um, copies of Well, them. not really. I think that so the, um, the antihistamines so act by preventing the release of other yeah. agents as a result of yeah, these antibodies. Um, well, well, not yeah, yeah, right? yeah, okay. And, uh, and Levine this is type there of too, uh, preparation that we are, have been um, using clinically actually prevents the person from forming antibodies right at the end. So that she never has the she never has the opportunity to make them and therefore the baby is never in any jeopardy at all at any time. So it's really preventive instead of it's truly preventive. Yeah. What what gave you the idea or where did the idea come from that this might be uh, uh, accomplished? Yeah. Uh, well, we have, I should say that was yes. uh, Bill, uh, Dr. Pollock, and uh, Dr. Fredder and I uh, began to review the methods of immunosuppression or prevention of immunity. And of course, x-ray and very strong drugs were being used. But there was one method that was in the literature for more than 50 years. That was that if you gave the antibody itself, very substantive the mother mates, so that's what you gave that artificially, by injection, it would, the mother would, would just not make it. Or this was this was seen in other systems like the uh, bacteria and animals in the experiments. But the principle applied that you gave the antibody, the mother or the individual did not make that antibody. Is that what Rogam is? Yes, it is. It, 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 what the, the Rogam does, it combines with the, um, so perhaps this chart here, in the, um, this is diagrammatic, of course, quite purely diagrammatic. This is supposed to represent the woman that is pregnant with her baby, having these, to her, foreign red cells. These tend to, particularly before the baby is delivered, it gets in, these red cells get into her bloodstream. Now, without this protection, these red cells, which are completely foreign to her, will stimulate her to produce these antibodies shown in this um, diagrammatically here. Which attack the red cells? Which will attack and, in fact, destroy those red cells. But in the next pregnancy, the subsequent to this one, 
she, of course, is already immunized. And once a person is immunized, there's very little you can do about them altering this response. And, of course, in her next pregnancy, these antibodies get back across the placenta and then um, damage the fetal red cells. But with Rogan, just after pregnancy, this drug is given, and the antibody combines with the red cells, destroys them, and prevents them becoming immunizing the woman as an immunity. So the next baby that she carries is completely safe because she is not uh, immunized. So she is now in the same state, immunologically, as she was the first time. Did you say or did I misunderstand that this has been in medical literature and knowledge for 50 years? The immunological principle, yes. But Why has it taken that time well, for this to be developed? Well, the, the workers have been interested in getting it. Sorry. And, uh, and uh, when they found, saw this happen, it got in their way. In other words, they wanted to immunize people and protect them, and they found that they weren't getting the immunity they, they wanted. So they studied the phenomenon for that reason, and uh, uh, we thought that it could be used in this particular disease where immunity is a bad thing. She's your representative from the Do you think there are other diseases by which this reverse principle and which this I think, uh, of course, we would normally be thinking ahead as much as possible, trying to exploit as far as we can this particular principle. And I do believe that there are many areas that there, there could be an application. One, of course, is in, in the area of um, allergies, one might suspect that, and we've known for some years, some of these antibodies will be as opposed to other antibodies causing an allergy. Um, other people have been exploring this in terms of uh, the immunobiology, cancer, and related fields, tissue transplantation, and so on. All these are, are purely hypothetical. We're not, we don't do this work. I wonder if, if it's not too far fetched if one example might not be some type of virus. The type of virus could be developed that would attack malignant tissue and leave healthy tissue alone. Example of it has been proposed. This now would, would a, a mother who has this uh, potential for RH disease her be permanently protected after one treatment, or would she have to keep taking dosages of this prior to each pregnancy or after the first pregnancy? Oh, she would need it after every after RH positive pregnancy. Yep. I see. And then she will always remain in the same state that she was. Very often with vaccines and new developments, there's, there's always uh, everything is fine and there's sort of one hitch or there are side effects or there is something that's not absolutely okay. yet uh, a lot of perfect for vaccine yeah. and vaccine. Is this the case? With uh, this, uh, no, this looks very good. It's been uh, used in uh, male volunteers now in mothers for three years and uh, tomorrow uh, we're looking forward very much to a, a symposium on this where the uh, doctors, Dr. Finn from yeah. Liverpool that's, that's and Dr. Robertson yeah. from Edinburgh and Dr. Schneider from uh, Scotland and Dr. Jennings from Long Beach and all of these other groups have been uh, working on this. We're not the only ones. So there's a lot very wide experience okay. Okay. now and it looks good. Our time is up and our thanks to Dr. William okay. Pollock and Dr. John Gorman for this uh, discussion, this new medical breakthrough in the RH effect of Rogan. We have Take a station break now after meetings at this point of a good day. This is today, watched by more viewers than any other morning news program ever. Oh, you did? Oh, okay, okay. All right. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Did it stop? Yeah. I can fix it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Good. We have a learning lab at 10:30. Yeah. Yeah.